Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I created these recent abstract renders in Cinema 4D. Um, I actually uploaded a video, I think last week, um, basically a speed art of me creating these free renders and it got a really good response. I think it's on about 50 likes now, so thank you to everyone that watched that video, hit that thumbs up button and supported it. Um, it really does mean a lot to me, so thank you very much. And because of that, I thought that I would just break it down and make more of a tutorial out of how I create those abstract renders. So I'm going to jump straight into cinema and let's get cracking. So I think I'm actually going to take this one as kind of the main influence for this tutorial. So in that case, I'm going to start with a cylinder. So when I'm creating these abstract renders, usually I'm kind of just um, going with the flow. I haven't really got much planned out. so. I'll just take a load of different shapes and kind of blend them together. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video is the process of how I do that. So I'm going to start with this cylinder and the first thing I'll do usually is grab a displacer which you can find up from this like effectors tab here and it's just in the bottom left here and we can make this a child of the object and if you haven't used the displacer before Basically, it's going to take the segments from your object. So if I just go to garage, garage shading lines, I don't know how you pronounce that. I always get it wrong. Um, it's going to take your polygons and basically displace them by using data that you input into the displacer. So at the moment, nothing's happening. And that's because we haven't told Cinema what to, what to use to displace the object. So if we go into shading and as something like a noise. You can already see how we're starting to get some variation in our object, but at the moment there's just not enough segments to get any real detail in that object. So what I'm going to do is crank the rotation segments up to 32 and do the same for the height segments. So now you can see we're getting a lot more detail in this object and I'm just going to go back to this mode here so I can actually see what's going on. and. Then we can just go into our noise and just maybe have a flick through and see what different ones are doing to the object. And to get a better idea of how it's affecting the object, I'm going to drag this into a subdivision surface. So that's just going to smooth everything out. And now we can have a proper look at what's going on. So I'm just going to scroll through and see if any kind of take my fancy, see if there's any that are looking quite cool. This one looks pretty cool. And within this noise, there's a bunch of different settings we can play with. But the main one that I play with is the global size. So maybe crank that up to like a thousand. And now we're getting some like bigger displacement here. And we can change the low clip and the high clip. So that's going to affect the blacks and whites within that noise. So obviously adding more contrast is going to add more contrast to your displacement as well. So I'm pretty happy with something like that. That's pretty cool and we can play with the seed as well just to see what other results we're going to get. Maybe that's that's quite nice. And if I click back onto the displacer and go to object, we can play with the strength here. So we could go into like minus values and that's just going to in invert the effect. And we can ch also change how much height it's going to displace this object as well. So if we wanted it to be more subtle, we could bring it down and in the other direction if we wanted it to be really intense we can crank the height up so I'm going to leave it at 10 I think I think that's a pretty good point and straight away we're already getting kind of like an abstract look to our shape so the next thing I did in this particular um, render is I actually used um, a cloner so what I'm going to do is grab a sphere and just scale this down move it to the side so I can get some size comparison and just add some more segments to that just to smooth it out a little bit and then I'll go up to MoGraph and Cloner and if you haven't used the Cloner object before basically you can drag a object to become a child of the Cloner and by default it's going to put it into a grid array so you can see how now it's cloned it um, in a 3x3 three three grid and if we were to increase this number here to like 3 it then goes three in the y-axis. So this is a really cool way to use the cloner, but the way we want to use it is by changing the mode to object. This allows us to select an object to clone those spheres onto. So we can drag the cylinder into that cloner object um, tab there. 
and now you can see that we have all these spheres cloned onto the cylinder. And by default, the count is going to be 20, but if I was to increase this to something like 40, you can see how now we've got 40 spheres and it's a lot more uh, populated on our cylinder. And straight away, we can see how we can tell that they're two separate objects. And I'm going to talk about how we can blend those together in a minute, but the first thing I do to add even more variation is whilst I've got the cloner selected, I'll go back up to MoGraph, Effector, and you have all these different effectors you can use. And the most popular one and the one that I use the most is the random effector. And if we select that, you can see how now it's kind of shifted all the position, all the positions of these spheres. And that's not really what we want. So if we come into the parameter of our random effector, and I'm just going to untick position. So now they go back to normal. And the main thing that I want to use for this case is actually the scale. So if we tick that, we're now able to randomize the scale on the X, Y, and Z axis. And you're able to do this with position like we just saw and with rotation. So if I was to put like one, one, and one in all of these, basically for every sphere, it's gonna randomize the X, Y, and Z scale by one, sorry, not 11. Um, so each of them have like a slightly different shape to them. And that might be cool, that might be the effect you wanna go for, but in this case, that's not what I want. What I actually want is to scale them all randomly, but in proportion. And the way we can do that is by ticking uniform scale. And if I put in something like 0.5, you can now see how they're scaling up and down in proportion um, by 0.5 of their original size. And that's both like increase and decrease. So some have got like twice as big and some have got half as small. Um, yeah, I think that's right. Um, so maybe I'll just turn this down to like 0 0.25 and I'll actually decrease the original size of the sphere. So something like that. And now we've got a pretty cool looking result. And um, there's a few more effects we can stack on top of this, but I think for the next tool we're gonna use, it's not really necessary. So I won't go into that um, right now. But what we're actually gonna do is I'm just gonna randomize this C to give us a more interesting layout. So maybe something like this, where it's a bit more populated, that's cool. Um, so the next tool we're gonna to use, which is gonna blend all these objects together is something called the volume builder and the volume mesher. First of all, I'm gonna put the volume builder as a child of the volume mesher and then I'm gonna drag all the objects we just made and put them as a child of the volume builder. Now straight away you can see how it's blended all those objects together, but now we've got these like really janky lines and these artifacts where the different intersections are. So we've got to do a few things to sort these out. So if we go into the volume builder, um, you can see it's fairly straightforward. You basically have all the objects which are a child of the volume builder in this kind of layer system and you then have something called the voxel size. Now this essentially is how much detail is in the object. So by default, it's gonna be 10 centimeters. If I was to turn that down to one centimeter, you can see how we now have a lot more detail in this object. You can see where that intersection is, but you can also start to see where the polygon faces are. So there's something we need to do to help kind of reduce this. And we could turn the voxel size back up to something like two. Um, and then, you know, it's not gonna be as noticeable, but then you start to get these artifacts here. So I'm gonna leave this at two actually for now. And what we're gonna do is apply something called this SDF smooth. So I'm gonna hit that. And that's basically like a subdivision surface. So I could probably actually disable the one from our original cylinder. So I'm actually gonna take that out and delete that. Um, so yeah, we've got this SDF smooth and I'm just gonna drag that above the cylinder, drag the cylinder back down to the bottom. And this is something to be aware of is just making sure you've got your layers in the right order um, because what just happened was because I adjusted this cylinder, it took it right to the top and that basically meant that the SDF smooth was only affecting the cloner underneath. So you just wanna make sure that you've got an eye on your layers and they're all in the right order. 
But yeah, we have this SDF smooth, which is basically, like I said, a subdivision surface. And by default, it's set to uh, operator Gaussian, which can be like a, which is like the strongest version it has really. But you can see if I disabled it, um, we're losing quite a bit of detail from our displacer. And you know, maybe it's smoothed it out too much. So you can change this operator. Usually mean is quite a good one. Uh, we're starting to get more of that detail back in from the displacer but you can see that it's not as strong um, as the Gaussian one however like we have with the voxel size we have a voxel distance for the SDF smooth so if we wanted to kind of smooth this out a bit more we could up this to three and now that's start to blend it together a bit more um, but usually I'll either use this one or I'll use the Gaussian and I could turn down the voxel distance to one and now we start to get more of that detail come back in. So it's kind of finding like a middle ground of, do you want more detail or do you want it to be a bit smoother? So maybe something like 1.5 is like a good middle ground. And you can see we're starting, or we can still see the polygon surfaces on our spheres. Um, but by the time you put texture on this object and you light it, um, you're not gonna see that too much. Another thing I want to touch on, this is probably the last thing I'll talk about, is this mode tab we have here. So at the moment we have union set on the cloner, which basically means it's going to blend the cloner into the object below it, which is the cylinder. However, maybe that's not the effect you want. So you've got a few different settings here. You have subtract. So instead of blending it, it's going to actually cut it out of the object below or you have intersect. So it's only gonna show areas where the two objects are intersecting with each other. So you can get some really interesting results from that. And you could actually stack these up to get some cool results. So I could duplicate this cloner. So I'll just do that in here and maybe change the seed of this one to something like that, for example. And if I go back into the volume builder, make sure that's below the smooth and change this one to subtract. We now have a mix of the cloners that are blended with the cylinder and ones that have been cut out of the cylinder. And we can move that below. So then we still have some of the spheres on top and just some places cut out. So you can create some really cool, interesting effects with this. And you can see in less than 10 minutes how we've been able to create a really cool abstract design. And this is just using cylinders and some spheres. That is essentially the process I go through when creating these renders. Um, I'm probably going to put this into a two part video. So in the next video, I'll talk about how I light and texture these renders. But if you can't wait for the video, the Gumroad page is there. You can go and download these project files for free. Go check them out. Let me know what you think. And if you use anything from the project files, make sure to tag me. Um, on Instagram or Twitter. The handle is the same on both. I am Ross Mason. Um, I'd love to see what you guys come up with. But thanks for watching the video, guys. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help me and the channel out. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload a video. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.